Welcome to the Edge Discovery Workshop, Green Bonds for Green Building. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I am Ruthmir Musich, the Business Development Lead of IFC's Green Buildings Market Transformation Program. I'm very fortunate today to be joined by Sean Kidney, co-founder and CEO of the Climate Bonds Initiative, which to me is the, is the leading organization bringing forth knowledge and understanding of how capital markets can participate in climate solutions. I will let Sean introduce himself and his organization in just a minute, and he will speak about the market for green bonds. A bit about this webinar. The webinar is being recorded and materials will be shared in a few hours once our system generates the recording. During the webinar, please only use the chat feature to ask questions. I will serve as your host and I will moderate the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. At the end of the presentation, before we turn to questions, we'll ask you to fill out our feedback survey, which helps us to improve our delivery. We apologize for our warning at the bottom of the screen as sometimes people forget to connect to audio. Please also excuse any technical difficulties during the webinar as we're all implementing remotely, which adds a degree of complexity. We are pleased that this webinar is being co-promoted by several organizations in this space. Besides the Climate Bonds Initiative, who is serving as a co-presenter, the webinar is also being co-promoted by the International Capital Markets Association, the Sustainable Banking Network, the Green Banking Academy, and the Green Bond Technical Assistance Program. Our agenda today will include several main sections. Sean Kidney will present an introduction to green bonds. We will then dive into understanding of the market for green buildings, including current and potential investment opportunity and green building definitions and how to use EDGE to satisfy technical criteria. We will then look into the business case for green buildings from the perspective of both investors and developers. We will look into how EDGE helps in the green bonds process. Each of these will be illustrated by case studies of institutions who have already successfully utilized green bonds for their green buildings program. We will end with a question and answer session, but you can use the chat feature to post questions at any point during the session. Feel free to send questions to everyone so we can see the entire list of questions. Before we start, I'll introduce IFC. IFC is a member of the World Bank Group. We are focused on solutions for private sector development, and part of our mission is to create markets that support climate business. IFC created the Green Building Market Transformation Program to address the gap in the market for an international green building standard that offers a free software solution to help identify the most cost-effective ways to design and build green and to unlock the potential for a new era of green construction and development. IFC's four-part strategy supports diverting investments to green buildings through working with banks, investing directly into the building sector, advising governments on green building codes incentives, and the EDGE certification program. We have recently expanded our work into building resilience as well. So far, IFC has mobilized $5.4 billion in green building investments from its own account and through syndicated loans. This is another way to understand IFC's offer, ranging from broad market creation efforts and working through specific types of advice and investment. You will see at the end of this webinar a call to action to connect with IFC 
so we may deploy these one-on-one -on -one interactions with you. Let me give you an example of IFC's work on catalyzing the green buildings market through the case study of South Africa. To address the housing shortage in the country, IFC invested 21 million US dollars in a fund managed by International Housing Solutions, a large equity investor in South Africa's affordable market segment. IHS was the first in Africa to adopt the EDGE standard. They used EDGE to find the best solution that will save energy and water given the local climate and local construction practices. As a result, IHS was able to minimize incremental costs from an initial 2 to 6% when it first started to now as little as 0.25% per unit. Many of the green measures used are centered on passive design or other sensible measures such as low floor showers. IHS compared the performance of the green development against non-green development and found that green homes created annual savings on utility bills equal to one month of rent. This is making these properties very attractive to both buyers and renters. These findings were just published in the Housing Finance International Journal, and we plan another webinar explaining our case studies in affordable housing. At the same time, IFC created partnerships with the Green Building Council of South Africa for technical trainings and market education, including to both banks and the government. The example of IHS has inspired other developers to take action. Baldwin Properties announced in May of last year that they will be certifying over 16,000 units in 10 projects to be built over the next few years, making it the largest edge registration ever. This then led to action by the financial market. APSA, one of the largest banks in South Africa, announced a partnership with Baldwin for an eco-home green mortgages investment product. This and other case studies has been published by IFC in a comprehensive paper on green buildings, which was launched at the UN Climate Conference last December. You will be able to find the case studies we're talking about today in this paper, as well as our guide to help you think through on how to launch a green real estate program. With that introduction behind us, let me turn to Sean for an introduction on green bonds. Sean, I'm going to turn the presentation right to you in just a second. I see Sean, there we go. And Sean, you can unmute yourself and start. Okay, apologies for the slight slow start. Sean Kidney here, I'm the CEO of the Climate Bonds Initiative. For those of you that don't know our work, we're a, uh, an NGO that works to mobilize global capital for climate action. You probably know this, but just let me just say, if we were to achieve the emissions reductions that the International Panel of Climate Change says we must achieve to address the risk of catastrophic climate change, that's really extreme climate change that will see catastrophic loss of life and so on, then we have to reduce by 50% in 10 years and be at the uh, at, at net zero carbon by 2050. Some 40% of those emissions reductions are going to come from the built environment. Now, you heard me right, because buildings consume a lot of energy. If we can get that energy used down, we can dramatically and significantly increase our 
uh, use of fossil fuels while we're switching over renewables. And this is especially important in emerging markets. Over the last five or seven years, globally, we've had a vast installation of renewable energy. But the horrible secret underneath that is that during that same period, we have added more air conditioning in terms of energy use per annum than renewable energy installations. So in fact, our emissions have continued to go up and our use of fossil fuels has continued to go up even though we have vast build up renewable energy because our buildings are so inefficient and of course we're getting richer, a combination of the two. As we get able to buy air conditioning, we tend to put in bad air conditioning into badly designed buildings. These are things that have to change if we have any chance of meeting our climate goals. And of course, we, changing that will reduce energy. We can't see your presentation, so I might turn myself back into a presenter and or maybe Sorry, even into the end. Um, okay, because it says I'm sharing, so you better go in that case. <laughs> we'll figure it out, no worries. <laughs> okay, so that's the background. We work across emerging markets, um, Latin America, as key African markets, um, and I'm very keen to hear your story about Baldwin Rusmia because uh, we're starting a South African program of supporting green bonds in the South African market. And we have um, programs in India and Southeast Asia and China. We partner that with organizations like the IFC who have got significant technical expertise and also a whole lot of support mechanism for the banking sector and the private sector. And what we're looking for is to encourage a green bond market. What we've seen happen in the last few years is the successful creation of the fastest growing asset class on the planet. Um, some 10 years ago, there were roughly $3 billion of green bonds issued. Uh, there was a very slow patchy growth. In 2013, uh, Rusmia's colleagues at the Treasury section of the IFC issued two half a billion dollar benchmark size bonds that were so successful two and a half times oversubscribed in one and a half hours of, on the market, extraordinary, that the, the debt capital market world woke up and said, whoa, what's going on here? We had engineered successfully in the years before, invested demand, and then the IFC issuance was proof that this worked at large scale with comparable bonds. Since then, we've seen a steady and sometimes rapid growth in this market. So in the 2018, 2019 period, it grew by 50%. Uh, we've seen all sorts of issuers in this particular market, from banks to corporates to development banks. IFC's got a significant issuance program. They're at about $10 billion, a bit over $10 billion of cumulative issuance to date. And we've seen the growth of sovereign bonds too, some $50 billion outstanding of US dollars in sovereign bonds around the world so far, with issuance not only from the Netherlands and France, but also from Nigeria and Chile and Fiji, who's done a couple. With green buildings beginning to play an important part of this role. One of the reasons for issuance has been the increasing appreciation on the part of investors globally, institutional investors, about the forward risks of climate change. Since the 2015 Paris Agreement, there has been consensus that governments are acting, will act, and it's just a matter of time. The people are looking for ways to mitigate their portfolios and to put money in places that are less likely to be impacted by transition risk, governments acting, but, and also now by physical risk, which is why we're starting to talk more about resilience and adaptation issues, as Rosemir indicated earlier, in the building sector. We see this demand being incredibly strong. In fact, in the crisis that we're currently going through globally, the demand has, if anything, been higher than normal for green bonds. In Europe, at the beginning of April, we saw a bond by Iberdrola for 750 million euros, which was 11 and a half times oversubscribed, which is extraordinary and gave them an extremely competitive price. Let me put it in those terms. Interest rates in Europe are low already. Uh, followed a couple of weeks later by Swisscom, the IT company or tele tele telecommunications company of Switzerland, who put out a bond with half a million uh, euros, which was 14 times oversubscribed and got a, a distinct price benefit amongst, against other bonds that issued before. Now, there's always contextual issues around price benefit. 
uh, the market has changed, there's particular appetite for X and Y, or Donald Trump's put out a tweet, who knows? So it's very difficult to draw very precise views about the primary price in the market. All those Swisscom were very proud of the price they got. What we do see happening is in the secondary market, very clear performance benefits for green bonds. They are seen as a more valuable product and they put downward pressure on primary because people are paying a little bit tighter on primary because it's worth more when they trade it later. So there are many characteristics I can give you about that, about, about the bond market for uh, treasurers and issuers. But in a survey we've just done of 87 issuers around the world, the interesting thing we found is that where they were getting price benefit, and you know the Chilean government with its sovereign has got very strong price benefit, they are doing it primarily to deepen and strengthen their relationship with investors over a longer period. And in fact, in the commercial sector, in liquid currencies and US dollars and euros, we see a specific thing happening where companies that issue green bonds get a stock price bounce and it stays up. Clearly investors are saying the green bond issuance is an indicator that the company is doing something to address climate risk and therefore is likely to be a little less risk in the future. Now this isn't just happening in the euro and the dollar. We've seen some very significant movement in China China is now the second largest green bond market globally. It's about 25% of global issuance. Global issuance, by the way, is approaching a trillion dollars outstanding. This is quite a major market now. We saw an extraordinary bond issued uh, a couple of weeks ago where the coupon came in at uh, 100 basis points lower than the central bank's benchmark rate. Unheard of. This was a certified climate bond, in fact. So the demand is growing and in the crisis, we're actually seeing very strong indications that green bonds retain a premium and increasing their benefit going forward. So this is the growth so far. We're expecting growth in the sovereign space and in the non-financial corporate space. We, let me take you to the next slide though, because buildings fit in everywhere. Rizmuya, if you could push me forward. When this market began, it was dominated by the allocations of proceeds to energy, clean energy investments, notably by development banks. There were other things in there. Note the buildings component, which is the second band from the bottom, uh, which has continued to be a substantial piece of this market as the market has grown extensively. People often don't realize the critical importance of buildings and the bond market is just realizing the benefits of doing it. Uh, all sorts of issuers have building related investments in their market. We've seen people like uh, Acorn that um, uh, Rusmi's going to talk about in a minute in Kenya, who's done a certified climate bond against some energy efficiency, uh, energy efficient buildings that were edge certified. And we've seen in Singapore, CDL, one of the first issuers, a real estate trust has issued bonds against energy efficient buildings. But we've also seen a lot of banks. So in this particular market, this is not about always the new building you do it can be refinancing buildings that qualify. I'll come to the criteria in a minute. The point is that bonds are primarily a refinance tool. In banks, they issue bonds after having made loans and put them on their balance sheet. That helps increase the strength of the balance sheet. They can then issue more bonds and sometimes they spin off asset-backed securities. In fact, a large chunk of this market, some 15%, is made up of asset-backed securities for energy efficient buildings issued by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in the US, who now have a very substantial program to do that. And I note that Sid Kusum is in, on the line from Indonesia, from the secondary mortgage company. We're looking for secondary mortgages companies around the world to be able to do what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have done against their green building portfolios. What we need, the secret here is a labeling scheme. We need to have buildings reviewed, verified and labeled as meeting the critically important criteria. And that's what EDGE does. So EDGE, through its labeling scheme, is a conduit in to the green bond market and the benefits from the green bond market. Of course, sovereigns can do this as well. Uh, uh, municipalities can do this well. Any institution who can issue a bond from a credit perspective could be allocating those proceeds to either buildings that qualify or new buildings that qualify, that can get EDGE certification, and be able to gain access to the green bond market. With me, if I can take you through the next slide, please. <clears throat> and please do ask questions in the chat. 
I will aim to try and answer a few of them once Rosmi is back on screen. I, I've mentioned the green bonds pricing. The key point for in, issuers in this market is you attract more investors. Now you can manage that in different ways. You can give them the same price as previous bonds, but focus on getting them the loyalty features of their interest in the green bond to be the critical factor for you. Or you can look at how you can diversify your, your investor portfolio simply so the next time you come to bond, it's going to be easier and quicker to do it. There are many reasons for doing this, but the key point is investor diversification. And then price benefits usually appear in the secondary market and sometimes in the primary market, such as I've mentioned during this particular crisis. You also have a halo effect that comes in from stock market bounce of your private company, but there's another halo effect that uh, many issuers also report, which is price depression across their whole bond range. So typically, a green bond issuer will have some assets that qualify. They'll issue a bond, it could be an asset-backed security, or it could be a corporate bond where they are simply, with a transparent and verified process, allocating the proceeds to projects or assets they have that qualify on their balance sheet. So it's a nominal allocation within the portfolio. In those circumstances, we often see reports by issuers saying that all bonds improve in price as a result of a substantial green bond issuance. I investors are not only looking at the stock price, but they're looking at other bonds as thinking these are likely to be lower risk because the company seems to be doing something. Green bonds is about signaling to investors you're on the right track and on the right side of the fence when it comes to addressing climate change, energy efficiency, and future and potential government regulation that might impact on those investments. Of course, it also an indicator that your energy bills are likely to be lower and this could become a premium building product for clients, but that's gonna vary in different markets in terms of the data available. Next slide, please. Green bond issuance is happening globally. These are the countries that we've seen issuance happening, and we have discussions in many other countries, from Senegal to Cote d'Ivoire to Dhaka uh, to Cambodia about green bond issuance there. So it really is a, quite a phenomena globally. Next slide, please. So now, just to finish up what the headline criteria gives you a context for EDGE. In the climate bonds certification process, and we provide a gold label stamp for people who wish to get uh, their green assets and their green bonds certified to make it easier to market it to institutional investors, particularly in, in developed countries. The climate bond certification requires you for existing buildings to have it in the energy or emissions performance in the top 15% of similar stock. What that means is that in a city like Johannesburg or Mumbai, we're looking for a measure that will ensure that the building is the top 15% of performers in that particular geography. EDGE gives us that, and we recognize that as a valid and important proxy for this. There are other options. You can use, if you're in a rich country, you can use lead, uh, gold, or platinum with a ASHRAE 90.1 measurement of at least 30%. ASHRAE 90.1 is a measure of estimated emissions. There are other measures you can use and proxies. In Europe, you can use energy performance certificates in selected markets, such as A and B in the Netherlands, as a proxy. Wherever possible, the Climate Bonds Initiative looks for equivalent proxies in different markets, but EDGE is our prime partner in emerging markets. Uh, we have also been working at the European Commission level over the last 18 months to develop a European taxonomy of sustainable investments which will not only govern the green bond market in Europe, this is important if you're someone in Kenya wanting to issue in the European market, but will also govern investor disclosure to regulators about the climate risk and sustainable assets and what investors are allowed to call sustainable in terms of products and offer, like sustainable funds. They all have to meet the European taxonomy by regulation. The European taxonomy uses the same metric, essentially as the climate bonds initiative which is energy performance being in the top 15% of similar stock. Now, over time, proxies will be accepted within the European Commission, but at this stage, all you need to do is to make a good case as to why your investment fits in the top 15% of your market. Again, 
EDGE gives you that. It will allow you to issue green bonds in the European market under the new European regulation. There are a few other things about harm you must be uh, looking towards, but do no significant harm measures. And one of those will be around resilience and adaptation. And Rosemary will pick that up a little bit later in terms of how EDGE is looking at that. The second metric is renovations. So if you're doing a renovation to a shopping center or a development, then those renovations, the investment in the renovation can qualify as well. Now that can be in a large shopping center, it can be a $100 million renovation. A real estate developer or a shopping center owner could issue a bond to finance that as long as it meets a minimum of 30% emission savings. And if it's a longer tenor bond, 20 years, it will need to be at least 50%. So we are looking for substantive and important increases there. There are other measures in the European taxonomy about new build, but they're specific to European regulation. They're not applicable globally, so I won't go into them now. So finally, Rosmia, I just want to say, the opportunity in terms of green bond issuance to be able to raise capital is large. We have a market that is the fastest growing asset class in the planet, it's not only a market that is dominated by institutional investors from rich countries like Europe or the US or Japan. We find strong demand, very strong demand for these things in emerging market economies too. The Pension Fund Association of Nigeria or the Brazilian Green Finance Council that we have, which represents many of the large local insurance and pension fund investors in Brazil, or the same in Mexico. The domestic demand is strong as well, which opens up different opportunities for domestic issuance where national issuance isn't possible. There's a lot to be done here. The critical thing is labeling. If we can label and clarify that the buildings involved meet the criteria to participate in this market, it becomes a quick meeting with the underwriter banks to start raising money. Interest rates at the moment in the bond market are at an unbelievable global low. Where this market can be tapped by an organization, they should be looking at it to refinance and to finance forward portfolios and lock in lower interest rates. Wuzmir, back to you. Thank you so much, Sean. And I, I was monitoring the questions uh, very carefully. I think that this particular workshop was geared mostly to our investor colleagues who are familiar with bonds, but not so much familiar with green buildings. I am learning probably that we should probably do another one for our edge community that's familiar with buildings, but not familiar with bonds. So I will say that the Climate Bonds Initiative has many white papers, other webinars um, that you can join. We'll try to answer as many questions that you brought up um, on the bonds themselves but there are other primers and other ways to learn more about the particular uh, bond process. I know that one of the uh, questions came through is, you know, what is the percent, percent of the proceeds uh, that has to go to a green for a bond to be considered green building compliant? And that is 100%. So you will see later on that the, uh, as part of the criteria of the green bond principles, the entire amount has to be ring fenced um, it, does, it cannot go to any brown projects. It can only go to green projects. We will show you how EDGE can help you um, uh, go through that process and not only, as, as Sean mentioned, work on um, asset-based sec securities or uh, products that you already have, but many of our partners who have used EDGE uh, have used it to finance new construction, which will be a, a very, very interesting area. So again, I'll recognize that there was a lot of questions here and we'll probably do another follow-up on um, green uh, bonds, more specifically for our EDGE community. But for now, let me turn it over uh, back to understanding the green buildings market and the potential for investments there. So green buildings are a $24.7 trillion investment opportunity as defined uh, by IFC in our uh, green, uh, green Buildings paper. So when people think of the market, they probably think of uh, issuances such as solar or industrial energy efficiency. And even though Sean showed that a lot of the investment does go into, uh, into buildings, much of it is for refinance, 
And what is not yet well understood is the enormous potential for green construction, to finance new green construction. The number that we're showing does not um, include developed countries, nor does it include potential for refurbishment. Green buildings now comprise a relatively small share of global construction, but the market expects it to grow quickly as property developers, investors, and end users increasingly understand the financial and reputational benefits of building green. Our message to our investors is very simple. If you're investing in buildings today, you could be investing in green buildings tomorrow. We will show you that the switch from brown to green is not as difficult as you may think. Let's summarize the advantages of a green building investment program for the bank. In the US, it has been proven that green buildings ensure lower investment risk for the financing of both developers and home buyers. IFC is now developing an evidence program to explore this with the support of banks such as yourselves across various markets. There's an opportunity to become a market leader and gain greater market share. You will also learn enhanced brand reputation as an innovative and socially responsible bank. Ban Colombia, as we'll soon see in a case study, was named the most sustainable bank in the world by the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, in large part due to their work with green buildings. As Sean mentioned, after the Paris Climate Agreement, many international investors are looking for quality green projects. This provides the opportunity to diversify your funder base and to tap investors to new platforms such as green bonds. In addition to lowering your financial risk, certifying your investment project, uh, uh, certifying your investments protects you from reputational risk today and from climate policies in the future. Already, the Task Force on Climate Disclosure is asking that banks disclose their climate policies and their exposure to brown assets. Cities such as New York are imposing a carbon tax on conventional buildings. These policies will continue to develop as countries increase their climate ambitions every five years. One of the examples of a very successful program in green buildings to green bonds is Bank Colombia, the largest commercial bank in Colombia, which provides over 40% of the construction finance in the country. The bank decided to grow its green building portfolio through two green bonds, first with IFC support and then through an open placement. The bond was oversubscribed 2.8 times with 72 domestic investors participating. Bond Columbia predicts that investment demand could be 10 to 12 times the original size of the bond. Here is where the Bank Columbia success lies. To build the pipeline of green properties to finance, the bank conducted an extensive outreach to developers and offered financial incentives to both developers and home buyers. They offered discounting financing rates, but expect that once there's sufficient proof that greener assets have greater value and less risk, the cost of incentives can be assumed by other players in the market. The results have shown that the investment has paid off. Ban Colombia is quickly spending down its $400 million investment program and is expanding its operations into El Salvador and Panama. We can really say that the bank helped transform the market in Colombia. From zero certified homes in the country, when we first started our collaboration with EDGE, the country now has 15,000 certified or registered homes in just two years, and this number is growing. Developers working with EDGE will also enjoy a number of benefits. They'll be positioned in the, as first movers in the market with a marketing and communications push supported by IFC. This differentiation can lead to higher prices or quicker sales. Developers also enjoy the easy to use EDGE online certification process, which serves them every step of the way. At the same time, by incorporating EDGE early into their project design, developers can keep costs low. Certification, again, reduces reputational risk, satisfy compliance criteria with investors, and uh, communicates value to buyers. One of the main barriers to building green is the perception of high cost of green measures. But evidence across several markets 
suggests that incremental cost of building green is significantly lower than previously thought. The cost of building green varies across locations, but these four examples show that green interventions are economical across geographies and even for low-income housing. In South Africa, we already talked about IHS. They report the additional cost to build in accordance with EDGE standard to less than 1% of the construction cost. We see similar results in Vietnam, Mexico, and Indonesia. One example of utility cost reduction in the commercial sector is our case study from AC Hotels Veracruz under the Marriott Hotels brand. IFC published some of this finding in collaboration with the International Tourism Partnership. The paper includes many more case studies as well as a return on investment analysis, which shows that hotels in most countries can achieve a 20% resource efficiency with less than a year payback period. In the case of the Veracruz Hotel, they employed sensible measures such as efficient lighting, HVAC, and plumbing with no increased cost to their plan. But the savings were tremendous. The utility reduction resulted in predicted $87,000 savings per year. The paper includes other reasons to go green in this sector, including preferences by consumers and ability to act green, attract green finance. Capital House in Vietnam was able to increase their sales three times through EDGE certification for their low-income housing. They held an apartment showcase with EDGE branding and a media showcase. This led to the significant increase in their sales and the win of the FT Financial Times Transformational Business Award in 2018. Finally, in the example of developers are green loans, which is a similar instrument to green bonds. Both structures allow for large mobilization of green finance by, inv by investors. WDP is a Belgian-based REIT, which launched a green loan with IFC for logistics properties in Romania, all to be certified with EDGE. This was a $750 million uh, sorry, euro financing program with IFC, and the standardizing the framework under the EDGE certificate enabled multiple investors to participate, similar to what Sean has mentioned around labeling. So now you may ask, how will you recognize a building as green? How will your clients know how to design a green building? And how will end buyers recognize the value of a green building? Let's take a step back and define a green building. Sean has mentioned that there's a lot of technical guidance out there and it can be difficult for an investor to understand. IFC created EDGE in part to answer the need for a common definition of a green building that will connect investors, developers, buyers, and regulators. International green building definitions agree that a building must obtain a local or international standard of green building certification as verified and labeled by an independent party. For IFC, the building also needs to be at least 20% more resource efficient than a comparable baseline building in the local market. And finally, in order to satisfy green finance requirements, projects must have quantified impact reporting. The solution for all of these definitions is EDGE, which stands for Excellence in Design for Greater Efficiencies, and consists of three components. Our free software helps you choose the most cost-effective ways to build green. Second, EDGE is an achievable green building standard with a 20% resource efficiency criteria, and it's a certification system to verify and reward green building projects through a green label. We have already made sure that EDGE is aligned with international green finance criteria, including investor-oriented associations such as the International Capital Markets Association and the Climate Bonds Initiative. But we also work with real estate bodies such as GRES and disclosure platforms such as CDP. Why is this definition important? It allows our clients to access important sources of green finance. Sean mentioned the case study of ACORN in Kenya. They utilize the relationship that EDGE has developed with international, international standards 
and realize they can launch a green bond for a new portfolio of green student housing. This was Kenya's first green bond, and the company received a lot of attention when it launched the trading. The bond was launched entirely for a collection of new EDGE certified properties. In their green bond framework, Acorn simply needed to disclose that the use of proceeds will be for EDGE certified buildings. They did not need to worry about technical information in the framework, as EDGE is already pre-approved as an acceptable green standard. Preliminary and post-construction certificates ensure green compliance and reporting is in line with both ICMA and Climate Bonds Initiative guidelines. Another example is Vinte, a developer in Mexico who is attracting new investors by issuing green bonds. They too were secured because of their commitment to EDGE certification. Vinte has committed to certifying nearly 4,000 homes with EDGE. The EDGE software is the first of its kind in the world. What you will see with EDGE is that green measures are tied to return on investment calculations, becoming the only software that pairs impact decisions with financial planning. EDGE certification is possible for new and for existing buildings, suiting a variety of typologies. Multiple projects can be certified with a portfolio approach to transform a company's business model and maximize profits. Our website has a library of case studies, and they can be used either for promotion after the project is certified or for proof of concept to new investors. Where EDGE is a bit different from other certification standards is that we focus only on three categories of resource efficiency with an achievable minimum threshold. To reach the EDGE standard, a project must reach 20% savings in energy use, water use, and embodied energy into construction materials as compared to a local baseline. However, we have expanded our definition to go all the way to zero carbon. We have already certified our first zero carbon project in the Philippines, again showing with a real case study that even higher levels of green can be achieved in emerging markets. Arthur Land, uh, their first project achieved significant energy savings on site, 45%, and is purchasing renewable energy for 100% carbon neutral operation. Arthur Land has launched a green bond in the Philippines for projects with high level of sustainability, which are certified by LEED or EDGE or the local system called Verde. The offer was structured as a 2 billion pesos firm offer with a 1 billion oversubscription option. Arthur Land fully exercised its oversubscription option because of the good demand, thereby raising the equivalent to about 59 million US dollars on the green bond market. If your project meets or exceeds the standard, it can be certified for a modest fee. Edge certification helps to communicate benefits among investors, developers, and end users. The certificate verifies the claim and serves as common language. In this way, a financial institution does not need to introduce new due diligence measures to recognize green buildings on its book. When it comes to residential projects, each unit receives its own green certificate, which can then be used for products such as green mortgages. Let me show you the quick interface of the Edge software, and we'll show you how you can utilize this information. Edge software is available from the Edge website, edgebuildings.com, but here I have already opened up a session in progress with the residential building in Ghana. Today is not a technical workshop for Edge, but next week we will do a deep dive into Edge. So if you're interested to, do more, uh, to find out more, you can sign up and learn about Edge in its deep dive. You can see here that the uh, software has already given me a base case and because I've started working on it, it has given an improved case. I have done some work on lighting, and I have done some work on cooling, reducing my energy load. 
However, I will go here on the water, which is a, a simpler interface, to show you how the measures are connected. If I click on low flow shower heads, you can see that I'm saving water, but I'm also saving on energy because heating up less water gives me savings. I can then use other sensible measures such as low flow faucets and dual flush water closets. And I have met the edge standard for, for both energy and water. Where edge is truly unique is in this area. While we have the impact measures, and there's quite more here, and these can be reported on a portfolio basis as well, edge gives me my incremental cost, my utility cost reduction, and the payback period in years. This information can be used, as we heard in the case of um, international housing solutions in Africa or the capital house in Vietnam, to differentiate your product in case you're selling in the uh, residential market or to understand your utility savings if you're the owner of the property in the commercial market. I will go through a few points on the edge certification because I've, I've seen questions about the certificate and then we will turn to more case studies. Edge projects receive both a preliminary edge certificate at the design stage and the final edge certification at the post-construction stage. A bu building currently under construction can skip the preliminary process and go straight to final certification. As soon as a certificate is issued, a project study can be submitted for publishing on the Edge website with social media coverage provided across Edge channels. Edge certification is an asset certification, which means it does not need to be renewed. It is issued only once. However, our zero carbon certificate is the operational certificate, which is approached after the building has a year of operational data and significant occupancy. This is the certificate that would need to be renewed, but the pricing here is a lot cheaper. In most of the world, you have a choice between two certifiers with two slightly different business models. GBCI, the operational entity of the US Green Building Council that also offers LEED certification, has a sliding scale that requires an independent auditor with separately negotiated fees. The consortium of ThinkStep and SGS has a flat fee for projects with wine topology where both the audit and the certification fee are included. What you can remember is that the cost of certification for EDGE is about $10,000 a project, give or take. EDGE is available in most of the world, and we're even coloring some of the, the countries that you're not seeing on this map. There are country-specific certified pages on the EDGE website where you can find relevant information for your market. If your clients may not be familiar with EDGE, it's possible that we have not started with market education there yet. While EDGE may be new, the World Bank Group is a very strong brand and serves the preferential differentiator. We'd like to work with you as an investor and launch greater awareness. We have staff that we can deploy in different time zones that can help you in this process. Let's now turn to a few case studies on how to use EDGE in the green bond process itself. In order to comply with the green bond uh, guidelines process, you need to go through several criteria. EDGE can help you simplify your green bond issuance in several ways. First, you have to have use of proceeds criteria, but EDGE has been pre-approved by major standard setting bodies, and so all that your green bond prospectus needs to say is that the buildings will be certified. Second, because EDGE has been pre-accepted by these standard setting bodies, it means that the second opinion process of your green bond framework is also a lot easier. We continue to educate second opinion providers on how EDGE answers green needs. And again, we invite anyone interested in the technical deep dive for EDGE to join us next week in a technical overview of the software. 
In just a minute, we'll show you how you can structure your disbursement criteria to ensure an easy compliance process without adding extra burden on the issuer. Fourth, IFC can help you on the environmental impact reporting through the EDGE software, which ties financial and impact measures together. You won't need additional calculations to release your impact data. It will be provided by EDGE directly. Finally, one of our differentiating measures that we will support you through sharing of best practices and will provide you technical support as needed. We will show you how our marketing toolkit boosts your marketing presence for additional brand awareness and differentiation. One of the questions I'm seeing is why not France? It actually, we do have Edge available in, in France. We just haven't changed our map quite yet. So Edge is adding new countries at all times to expand with a vision to be available across the world. Let's take a look at the scope of possibilities that both investors and developers can utilize with green building. I'll start with capital markets, which today is the focus of our workshop. You can raise a green bond to finance a new portfolio of green buildings. Once you have a stock of certified buildings, you can securitize them as collateral as the green certificate provides the same standard that will enable securitization. You heard Sean many times mention the need for consistent labeling, which would enable the green bond process. You can also introduce new products such as green leasing or REITs. Having raised the funds, you'll need to deploy them into green construction and green mortgages or leases. In green construction, banks can incentivize the adoption of green practices by providing a lower risk rating for green buildings which won't become stranded assets when climate policies are increased. You can start by rewarding developers now for green adoption by providing a discounted financing rate, no matter how small, which are showing in our case studies. With home buyers, a green home may be slightly more expensive than regular construction. You can increase your allowable loan, loan ratio and qualify home buyers as utility savings can be redirected into a larger loan payment. One of the ways you can do this is to include utility bill savings in disposable income and adjust the debt to income ratio for the home buyer. You can see at the bottom, several of the institutions, both banks and developers that have already gone this way. Besides launching green building investment products externally, financial institutions are also looking internally and certifying their own offices. From the MRCB Bank in East Asia, Bank Colombia in Latin America, Pearl Credit in Eastern Europe, and of course our own World Bank Group offices in Africa. Green bonds can be used to finance construction costs of your own buildings or to refinance existing buildings as long as they meet the right definition. Let's look into some of the best practices for launching a green building investment program. Some of these, as I mentioned, are already captured in our green bonds, a green buildings paper. First of all, developer clients need education. They need to understand how to use EDGE for self-assessment, and they need to see case studies that show incremental costs are not as high as they previously thought. If possible, the bank is strongly encouraged to include incentives. We think even a small discount in the interest rate or potentially a longer tenor is the exact sweetener the developer needs in order to start their green project. When it comes to green construction finance, green criteria must be embedded into the loan agreement with clients. You might consider providing conventional financing at the start of a loan agreement, and require a specific time frame, such as three to six month period, during which time the project must be certified. At that point, green financing would be provided. Technical experts should be required in the process. It's best if the expert reports directly to the financial institution, because that person can remain sensitive to the bank's timelines and internal process. The edge certificate proves the project is verifiably green. 
This works on the level of a project, as well as for each housing unit when it comes to residential projects. Edge reduces your transaction costs by saving loan officers from che checking the implementation of, of green technical measures. They simply need to look to the certificate itself. Finally, you will need to report your impacts, which Edge can easily provide at both an individual project level and on a portfolio basis. At the beginning of your green building program, it may be necessary for you to provide incentives to developers in order to catalyze the market. We have already shown you in detail what Bank Columbia is doing in this space. Other financial institutions have also launched incentives for green building, and you can see the full list on IFC's Edge banking pages. You can see that the incentives range from technical assistance to incentivized loan pricing. Banks do this because green buildings are a better investment for them. It allows them a cross sale between construction and mortgages or leases and allows them to corner the market in their country. However, the biggest need to catalyze the market is awareness. And we would like to partner with you and help you bring that awareness to the market. I've already mentioned that hiring an edge expert is best practices. Edge experts are technical advisors who have been trained and accredited by IFC and are part of a global community of green building professionals. They will ensure quality control across your portfolio. There are various levels of technical advice possible, some of which are maybe free and some that require some investment from you because edge experts can offer basic or advanced services for developers. IFC can also provide training to the bank's investment officers, or you may choose a comprehensive advisory services agreement with IFC. IFC will also extend marketing support to both the investor and the developer to make sure we promote your project. This is just a short preview of what we have already done with our partners, which each of these having a case study of current work. Edge and IFC are helping both developers and investors create profitable, lower risk green building investment programs. I hope that we have shown you that Edge is different than other certification systems, but we complement them. When people ask us what is our biggest competitor, I typically say it is a brown building. It is not another certified building. We're looking to increase the level of certification and find that common label that's going to enable finance to flow. What EDGE does is simplifies the compliance by focusing on three parameters of efficiency, working with global standard setting bodies to ensure that certified projects conform to green finance requirements, whether those are bonds or loans. This leads to reduced processing as loan officers can rely on the, on the EDGE certificate with easy reporting on impact metrics. Fast and cost-effective, EDGE makes green certification achievable for all, bringing international cachet to certified projects through association with the World Bank Group's brands, delivering value to investors, developers, and end clients. Before we end, I'd like to acknowledge IFC's donor partners who have made EDGE and IFC's work in green buildings possible. These governments and institutions are the reason IFC is able to offer the Edge software application for free, as well as all of our awareness raising and promotional activities. We'll wrap up the session with a call to action before we turn to a question and answer. We have shown you a preview of the tremendous resources that are available in order to design, invest, and incentivize green buildings. Today's webinar was just a preview, and you'll see that our next steps include receiving technical training for your staff or your consultants with online modules and live stream training offered monthly. When you hire technical consultants on the project, make sure they're already accredited by IFC and knowledgeable about EDGE. We invite you to work with IFC to organize a discovery workshop 
with your client. Edge is best internalized when we are able to show the software directly to the developers and work on their projects. We also invite you to utilize all of our marketing materials with clients and the case studies we have developed for your proof of concept com conversation. Make sure your clients are already utilizing banking or government incentives present in their market. Finally, request additional client support from ISP. We're happy to guide both you as an investor or developer through because we know that, to, as I said today, it was just a preview. I will get ready for questions. And again, thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, the webinar has been recorded. The materials as well as the uh, recording will be shared along with several other um, pieces of information that you can utilize. And I will send you a link to uh, our survey, which we ask you to fill out before the end of the presentation. I have seen that lots and lots of great questions came through. And let me just take a second to try to answer them. Let's see, I will start at the end. It's a very, very rich discussion. See, I can see that Autif has helped understand the circular economy objectives. Um, that was a question that came on what ex exactly our focus is. We're very, very laser focused on our three uh, categories of resource efficiency. But uh, in the next week's session on the technical deep dive of EDGE, you're uh, welcome to ask more questions on this. Let me see. See. Okay. Great. It's a very, very um, rich discussion. One of the questions came on how can the green bonds foster the use of more weather appropriate material? I think what you will see in the, if you join the next week's session on EDGE is that we allow you a choice. So IFC is very happy to work with you um, and, and to talk about different practices that, that we have uh, internalized. But the idea about EDGE is that we're not prescriptive. We give you a menu of options and then you can uh, find out more information on that. One of the great, great other questions was on the impact reporting. So let me uh, share again the screen, and I will show you how the impact reporting works in Edge. So what I have uh, mentioned that is, is in this short session, I have not finished the materials. There is information here, and I can also, uh, after I've saved this, I can download my edge assessment and I will find that impact reporting. So you will see that uh, the, uh, every single project, once it goes through the self-assessment, can download this part. You can see the different measures that we have utilized. And this is the result. So I can see my final energy and water use. I can see my uh, savings, uh, both in terms of carbon emissions, uh, embodied energy savings and incremental cost. This is information is available to you as well as in your dashboard, and IFC can help release that to you on a portfolio basis, not just on a project by project basis. But that's a great question on, on impact reporting. Let's see some more questions. There were a lot of questions at the beginning about the um, green bonds, so I will, I will absolutely share some of the um, uh, training materials from the Climate Bonds Initiative where you can go through that. I think Sean was already uh, answering some questions on the interest rate for green bonds. Perhaps I can read that as well. Um, the question was, what is the interest rate for green bonds? And so you notice in both Sean's presentation, 
as well as his answer in the chat, is that the pricing and the interest rate depends on everything from the country and currency you're issuing to, to of course creditworthiness of the issuer. So you will need to look at recent issuance rate in a market you may be able to issue in. For emerging markets, foreign exchange risk will be one of the biggest issues, um, but there's some um, help there as well. And government bodies can often do this and attract in, uh, international investors if their bond size is big enough. So one of the things that we've noticed is that even though the pricing uh, uh, changes institution by institution, there are there is evidence about uh, on price uh, tightening as well as the attraction to um, other institutional investors across the board that helps you uh, expand your your um, program. It was a question from Juliet on the criteria for zero carbon. Juliet, I'll ask you probably to join us next week in the deep dive workshop for EDGE, and we will answer more um, on that as well. Let's see. Ah, great. One of the questions from Juliet is, can brownfield developments qualify for the green building certification? Is, if so, how important is the weight of brownfield versus greenfield in the equation? So brownfield obviously means an existing building, for example, whereas greenfield will be a new building. According to um, our best practice in the criteria is that the, uh, the building does need to be certified. So you can use, maybe I can sh uh, share my screen again, you can use EDGE for existing buildings as well and get them improved. Um, this will be the part that I mentioned here, the different types of, of buildings that um, where EDGE is available. Here. However, in the green bond uh, criteria, 100% of the issuance has to go to a uh, green property. So it may be a uh, brownfield property that has been greened, if you will. So there has to be some sort of resource efficiency criteria and 100% of the bond has to go uh, into that criteria. The allocation is also important because that those funds raised to a green bond cannot be used on other funds. So you cannot have a revolving fund that while you're funding uh, green building projects to go into you know, fossil fuel projects. There has to be a ring fence process. But um, uh, what we believe is that EDGE, again, can help you with that compliance without adding the extra burden on the issuer because the financial officers, all um, they need to do is look at the, the green certificate, which then serves uh, the allocation process. They don't have to go through and look through uh, technical measures to ensure that the building has, has met that criteria. So that will be here, and you can read more. There are um, uh, green bond guideline uh, uh, principles in general, and there are very specific ones for buildings. Um, I have them here included as links in our alignment. So when you receive the, you will receive a PDF of this presentation. You can see uh, different links into green bond um, guidelines for buildings uh, that you can click on to. I see a lot of great questions here. One of the questions from Lillian is, how do developers access funding from green bonds? So I hope you saw, Lillian, that some of our clients have been developers themselves, and they issued a green bond. It does not have to be a bank that issues a green bond. So we've had examples of Acorn in Kenya, uh, Vinte in um, uh, Mexico, and then we also had this new uh, product called Green Loan, and our uh, uh, client WDP uh, issued that as well. Um, otherwise, the developers will be working with a bank. So in the case of Bank Colombia, it was Bank Colombia that issued the green bond, and then they made that financing available um, with their uh, with their client. Great question. I can see a lot of questions on um, existing buildings versus new buildings. 
And one of the questions from Raphael is, what are the advantages of edge over other standards? Should we push for edge or are we okay with others? So I hope that you, you heard me say very explicitly that we uh, at ISC do not see other certification standards as competitor to edge. Um, our guidelines are only that the building be certified and IFC itself is agnostic to what that certification is. So if you go back, um, I'll go back to sharing, you can see here that our definition of green building only says that it be certified green as verified by an independent third party. This does not have to be EDGE itself. We do, however, think that EDGE really does bring value, especially for emerging markets. Because of the simplified compliance, reduced processing, cost effectiveness, and then for our banks, we think that there's quite a um, great part on, on impact reporting. So even though IFC is happy to promote other certification mechanisms, in the end, we do believe that EDGE itself delivers value. Let's see if I can answer one or two more questions. There's a great question on for residential units, who is supposed to ask for EDGE certification? Talking about mortgage loans. Um, for residential units, I think it's best if there is a partnership between the bank and the developer. And um, you saw that in the example of um, Bank Colombia. So with Bank Colombia, and again, this example is available on our website. You can see there's, there's a, a full case study in our Green Buildings report. Bank Colombia partnered with multiple developers. So they offered them an incentive and then asked their developers to send their home buyers back to, to them for their mortgage. So the developer is the link between the bank and the home buyer. In the case of South Africa, they actually um, worked with one developer. So um, APSA, and I made a mistake here, I should just say APSA, not Barclays. Um, APSA actually worked with uh, uh, only one developer with Balvin to develop their partnership because Balvin commanded a large portion of the um, the South African residential market. But again, they were the, the conduit between the bank and the, um, and the home buyer. What we offer to you is a partnership because what I mentioned is the main thing that the market needs is this part, is some education, potentially incentives. And we are very, very, very um, uh, excited to partner with our banks and to help them develop the, uh, uh, an awareness in the market that we can deploy. Let me end here. I know there was a lot of other great questions that have come through. I will actually um, try to uh, uh, summarize these and I will send them out uh, as part of the FAQ process as well. So in a few hours, you should be, you should be getting a, um, a recording of the webinar as well as the materials, and then we'll follow up again with, um, with more information. I will send you two more links before we, before we end. One would be the um, registration page for our Green Bonds um, uh, Part 2 webinar, which is a deep dive into EDGE. So we'd like you to, to follow up on that. And I will also send you a link to our survey, which we hope you can um, fill out before you end. So I want to uh, have massive, massive thanks um, to Sean, who uh, really gave us a wonderful uh, uh, introduction to Green Bonds. Uh, his organization, Climate Bonds Initiative, has just a, a library of really wonderful information, including webinars, case studies, where you can learn more about uh, Green Bonds. I will also like to thank a lot of our uh, EDGE colleagues, including Otif, who I know was helping to answer questions as I was, um, as I was speaking. We thank you all uh, for joining us today. As I said, this was really just a preview of the work that we're doing. The, the real proof is in the follow-up. So we invite you to, uh, uh, to email me. Please do uh, uh, send me a, a fresh email so it doesn't get lost in spam uh, so that we can follow up with you and do a one-on-one -on -one debrief on the information we just shared today because there's a lot that we, that we covered. 
thank you so much. I will um, end the webinar there, but I will keep the uh, chat going on so you can still continue to ask questions. Really appreciate your time.